Thank the chairman for saying he would respond to our re request to have a hearing on the increase in crime in the United States. And I want to emphasize the increase of crime in the United States and hope it doesn't turn into a gun control uh, hearing. General Jumper, uh, thank you for appearing today. In your 39 years in the military, you saw capability of drones develop and evolve. You described in your written testimony a drone that could see Serbian forces invade Kosovo and kill civilians, but could not do anything to stop it. So as Chief of Staff of the Air Force during the first four years of the global war on terror, you led uh, uh, as drones became a vital tool in precision targeting and terrorist combat combatants. What are the advantages of using weaponized drones and why were drones first, when were they, why were they first armed? Thank you, uh, thank you, Senator, for the question and thank you for the invitation uh, here today. <clears throat> uh, when I was a young captain in Vietnam uh, and for um, all the time from 1969 up to uh, the, the mid 90s, uh, when we went on a mission, we essentially had all the information about the target we were going to strike on our kneeboard. Uh, we had uh, pictures that were uh, at best hours, but usually days or even weeks old of a potential target. Uh, we would go to a forward air controller that was circling the uh, target in a uh, light aircraft, and we would take uh, verbal cues uh, off of roads and geographic um, geographically distinctive features to try and locate uh, the target, uh, and then we would uh, bomb the target. In some cases, these were troops in contact, and the urgency there was palpable. You could see uh, enemy forces in the, in the wire at the special forces camps. Uh, but the process of communicating the information was laborious, and uh, mistakes were made, and if it was fire coming from a building, the uh, standard was to destroy the building. Uh, we didn't know, other than it was fire emanating from that building, we didn't know what else was in that building. And if you look at the estimates of civilian casualties in Vietnam and the Korean War and uh, wars uh, uh, earlier, uh, they, are, uh, they are astounding, large, large numbers. Uh, with the invention of the Predator UAV and the ability to stare and hover over targets for long periods of time, uh, with uh, imaging infrared, with electro-optical and synthetic aperture radar, and uh, corroborate that information with uh, signals intelligence that come from, uh, uh, might come from the same area. We, we uh, elevated our capability to uh, be more precise and to uh, uh, characterize targets and to assess collateral damage by orders of magnitude. That this is not still satisfactory in many occasions is something that we continue to have to uh, work on, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I certainly agree with that. We need to do better. Uh, but this capability has uh, given us uh, the ability to discriminate in ways that we have never done before, been able to do before. The Hellfire missile with a 20-pound warhead, or even weapons that have no warheads have been used to make sure that collateral damage is minimized. Uh, when mistakes are made, they uh, have to be addressed. When rules of engagements are violated, people have to be held accountable. And I think uh, commanders uh, that I know would agree with those statements. So uh, this capability with RPVs has increased by orders of magnitude our ability to be more discreet, uh, and we continue something we still need to work on. Uh, Ambassador Sales, what is the effect of Afghanistan's fall to the Taliban and the creation of a safe haven in Afghanistan, which uh, I stated about in my opening comments, on the need for continued drone program. If we simply abandon the drone program and ISIS and Al-Qaeda are allowed to get stronger, what can we expect? Well, Senator, I, I think one thing that we should fear is that Afghanistan could return to the terror safe haven that it was in the years that led up to 9-11. Um, my, my concern is that with the complete withdrawal of U.S. personnel from Afghanistan, uh, the, the supporting elements necessary to carry out an effective campaign of drone strikes against ISIS elements there or al-Qaeda elements there 
um, will not make it possible for us to apply counterterrorism pressure to these growing terrorist threats. In order to do drone strikes, and, and, and this goes to their precision, and it also goes to um, how discriminating operators can be when using this tool, in order to use uh, drone strikes in a country, you need to have signals intelligence collection capabilities. You need to have human sources on the ground who are prepared to tell information to the United States that puts their own lives at risk, but they're willing to do it because they know the United States will have their back. We don't have those assets in the country anymore. And so my fear is that as ISIS Khorasan province begins to uh, grow its capabilities, and as Al Qaeda looks to grow its capabilities under the, under the protection of the Taliban, the United States will have neither the intelligence we need to know what our adversaries are planning, nor the strike assets in the country to take action in a precise and targeted way against a reconstituting terrorist threat. Uh, thank you. I'll submit the rest of my questions for answer in writing. 